I thought actually I'd give you a bit of an introduction who we are, um, why we came together, from where we come from, and why we also think that Copenhagen Atomics and PSI are a good match. Right? So, and um, I just give you some background on who we are, and then you will see maybe why, why, we are, why, why we want to go this route. So, when you looked into the newspapers or earlier this year, 1st of July, we first announced our collaboration. 1st of July on our webpage. Of course, been a long time in the making. It wasn't, did not happen overnight, but uh, quite a bit of negotiation. And then it happened very quick that it echoed in our press releases, were nuclear news the same day, the same day, it, the news flies first. Um, then in the Danish newspapers a couple of days later, Swiss newspapers two weeks later, everything takes a bit longer in Switzerland, it seems, even the news. And that brings me to Copenhagen Atomics, right? So now I guess you can probably got a hunch why we think we are a good match, why this is complementary to each other, because these guys come with a great concept, I think. And I think we complement them with decades of nuclear knowledge, of radiation protection, of licensing and specifically, and we think bringing this together is interesting for us. It makes for a good research story for us. Um, and of course, we also took a careful look of what we are doing, right? I mean, we are a federal research institute, so I, we have limited flexibility on what we are doing. And of course, I want to make sure I'm not running into an adventure that I cannot predict the outcome. So what I liked about Copenhagen Atomics is really, I think these are the success factors that we have seen. Of course, we have visited Copenhagen Atomics. We had a lot of technical discussions already. We see there's a young motivated team. We see there's a production facility, so it's not just paper, because many of these startups are just paper, paper concepts. Here we really see something happening, and that's impressive, I must say. Um, what, what we are bringing into it is, of course, I mean, I, I also like, I like the similarity in the flags, right? So that's, I, I thought actually I'll just play that little catch here with the Swiss and Danish flag. Um, so what we have is we have one of the team members here is, was the head of the last research reactor we have in Switzerland, Pavel, sitting in the back. So if you want to learn about Swiss research reactors, he is here. We have Marco, who was head, is head, of, the, head of the hot laboratory uh, today, who was also in charge of, of a licensing project for a nuclear power plant in Switzerland before Fukushima, because we had plans to build, right? Before Fukushima, Switzerland wanted to start replacing their nuclear power plants. And uh, so there's a lot of experience from there. We have, for our hot laboratory, because it's 60 years old, we had to also renew our license. So again, it's about licensing. How do you deal with licensing a 60-year-old facility according to new Swiss regulations? Not trivial. Took us quite a bit of time, but a steep learning curve, very helpful for also this project. Um, the same with the equipment when that, that went in there. Recently, we started a waste, uh, a waste uh, processing utility at PSI again. So we, are, we keep on licensing and challenging our, our regulator, and that's also how we learn. Um, we signed our contract on 1st of July, and then we are anticipating, well, as you, as you have seen, the big steel cask with content eventually. Um, just to say, we were impressed by the hardware, but I'm not, you have seen all the pictures, so I'm not repeating this, so, but you see the colleagues have been there and seem to be very happy about what they saw. Um, for me, more important is what we will start with, because we are so careful in Switzerland, right? So nuclear safety is a non-negotiable value in this country. We have a site located on the PSI place, and what we will do is, because we really want to make sure what we are doing, we will even put another shell, a big airplane crash safe shell around this container to really make sure that nothing happens. Nothing will ever happen, but we really want to be super sure. And this will be very, very convincing also to our, to our regulator that even in the worst case of a complete airplane crash on that facility, nothing will ever happen. And that's what we want to ensure. So that is basically a big hall that comes here not that big, but it will be it's a, bigger than the container for sure. Um, and then eventually, well, the container will come with all its parts. 
And then we will start, and then it will look like this likely, and then we will start our experimental campaign. Uh, I will not speak about, the, this just gives you a hunch of the licensing process. I'm not even gonna touch it because this is complicated. But it gives you an idea how many steps of licensing are involved and um, that's maybe for lunch break or maybe not, uh, you decide. Um, that you have seen our timeline, it's ambitious, but I think doable. And we start our, our topical discussions with the regulator these days. So we are now entering the technical phase where we try to start sorting out the details, how we are going to proceed to have a swift licensing. And if everything goes right, then this will come true. And for me, it's an exciting journey, I must say. And um, it's, it's new. You know, I've been here, it's been here now for 13 years. And for a decade, I have only done old power plants. And um, if this works out, it's, it's quite a nice story for, for Switzerland, for nuclear research in there, of course, for Copenhagen Atomics. Um, yeah, so and I think that's all I want to say. So thank you. <laughs>